Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic, inspection, measuring, and test equipment, also known as calibration. Aaron Snyder here for Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. This is the first video you've seen. Please go back and look at the executive series introduction. Check out the video description below for links to any supporting information and a summary of the material that we will cover. In these videos, we have a standard agenda that covers four items. You can see those in the progress bar. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to get those three bonus questions. Our requirement, inspection, measuring, and test equipment, or calibration, comes directly from 820.72 and ISO 1345 section 7.6. Calibration in five words. Test equipment must be calibrated. We have to make sure that our test equipment is suitable for use and capable of producing valid results. We have to establish and maintain procedures to manage our calibration program. As part of those procedures, we have to define limits for precision and accuracy. We have to address the storage, handling, and preservation of the test equipment. If we find that a piece of equipment is either overdue for calibration or out of specification, we have to take action, including potentially remedial action or recall. We have to make sure that our calibrations are traceable to a national standard. And we have to maintain calibration records on or near the equipment. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have an established procedure that manages my calibration program. Second, for each piece of equipment, I've established limits for precision and accuracy. Third, I'm doing my calibrations according to my established calibration schedules. And then finally, any calibrated equipment that's overdue or any out of specifications found are investigated and appropriate actions are taken. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, I do not have defined limits for both precision and accuracy. You have to have both. Second, I have a lot of calibrations that are overdue. Third, I go to do the calibration and I consistently have equipment that is out of calibration. It's OOS. And then finally, when I get an OOS or an out of specification, my actual action after I don't take action or I don't do an actual real investigation to understand both product impact and why the equipment was out of specification. And now for those three bonus questions. First, do we do any calibration in-house or do we send it all out to suppliers? Second, how are OOS out of specification calibrations handled? And then third, do we have a software system that governs our calibration system? If we do, is that software system validated? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.